Hey, it's Troy. I decided I wasn't going to do any more videos, so... Bazinga! Uh, hey, pen mail today! Again! Pretty cool, huh? One of the things that I've been waiting on and I ordered, you know, I've, I've ordered a couple of fountain pen books. I've got some on my uh, shelves that are mostly about different kinds of pens and manufacturers and what they look like. And I uh, was looking for restoration books, and there are several out there. Some are mighty expensive. Some of the ones that uh, I would really like to have, people are trying to gouge for pricing. And one of the ones they call The Book uh, by Frank Dubiel. I'm a Dubiel, Dubiel. My understanding is he passed away recently. Uh, but um, there's this one right here. So I just got this in the mail today. Uh, there was a company that was selling these, uh, and I've seen these on Amazon. People are trying to get sixty, seventy dollars for from uh, from unsuspecting buyers on Amazon. It's like there's no way. A couple of pen retailers online were selling this particular uh, restoration book, um, and you know, obviously, it's nothing incredibly professionally produced. But I'm more interested in the material contained therein uh, than its binding. But uh, there's one company that was offering them, and so I went ahead, and the only way you can purchase from them is to email and ask. So I did, and that and some another product that they had, and they never answered me, so they lost my business. So nibs.com for 20 bucks. I just had that delivered to my door today, so I've got a lot of light reading ahead of me. Uh, but uh, that's not the only thing that I got. Um, I got, well, let's see, for pen mail, I got a pen that I can't tell you about because it's a Christmas gift for somebody, so shh. So let me show you the latest addition to my Waterman family. My Waterman family has been growing over the past while. You know, Waterman was one of the first real fountain pens that I had. Uh, in the picture that I'm going to show you here is my Waterman family, and the, the Phileas, which I'll show you, um, is my, one of my oldest pens that I've got. Actually, it's my second oldest. And since then, I've liked Waterman's. I've talked about that on this channel previously. But, uh, as you can see, I've had some grow. I've given some away, so I don't have as many as I would have had I kept them all. But this is my latest Waterman edition. This is the Waterman Torsade. T-O-R-S-A-D-E. On the finial, it has the little W of the Waterman logo from the 1970s, and that's when this pen was being produced. The only thing that says on it is Waterman, made in France, right here, and it says it on the nib, not that you can see that from here, but you can see that this particular pen is actually a fairly small pen. I'm pretty sure it was designed with the idea of putting it in your pocket or maybe in a woman's purse kind of idea. Um, and you can see it's got a, it's like a stainless steel with almost like a chrome coating on it. And it has a twist almost like the rifling in a barrel on the inside of a barrel you got the twist well this is the same kind of idea but it's a twist on the outside the clip is nothing special and it's really stiff so you're not really gonna be able to do much with that clip but that's fine because usually when I'm carrying a pen like that it's in a pen slip like that uh, or I've got a bigger one that I always keep uh, when I usually I carry this one because it holds two and I always keep one for giveaway and one for my daily use. Um, what else can I tell you about it? All right, you open it up, it's a pull, it's a slip top, and like I said, from the 1970s. So it's a little older, and one of the things that I looked for was what kind of condition it was in. When I got it, it had a cartridge still in it, still with a little bit of ink in it. So obviously it was going to need a new, uh, a good cleaning, maybe a converter, that kind of thing. So, it being a Waterman, I figured, all right, I got a bag full of Waterman converters like this that I put in some of my other Watermans. So I went ahead and put it in there and I chucked the cartridge that was in there, which is actually that cartridge right there. Um, I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, so I went ahead and filled that up and I put in like a Papier Plume uh, Forget-Me-Not Blue ink. Kind of like it, it's not a bad looking ink. I'll show you what that ink looks like. Um, but, um, so, I had this converter in there, filled it up, wrote really nice. It's a Waterman. It wrote like a Waterman, like I would expect a Waterman pen to write. That's one of the reasons why I like Watermans, because they write reliably and they write very well 
every time. I only had one water in that was a problem with not writing real smoothly and I had to spend some time smoothing it out and it was a vintage pen that who knows how it had been abused by other people and I've got um, one or two that are really old that are in that picture uh, that I'm gonna have to uh, to work on to get them working again. But um, anyway, went ahead and put in that converter and while filming this video and getting to the point where I go to show you how it twists off and go to show you the uh, converter that was in it, it came out and it wouldn't go back in properly. I was like, what in the world? So I dug this <laughs> cartridge out of the trash can and I started to compare it. I started to look at it and I was like, okay, that's a little bit different. Actually, the cartridge was flat at the bottom, sort of like a Schaefer cartridge, for those of you who are familiar with Schaefer. And uh, it's definitely not where it's tapered here down at the end, even though when I first put this in, it actually stayed in fairly nicely. I got a couple boxes of Waterman cartridges. But you can see the cartridges for Waterman are just like the cartridge or the converter. So, you know, it's tapered down with a little nipple. All right, that wasn't going to work. So, so I took the uh, I took that particular cartridge. I flushed it out with a, a blunt point syringe, and I refilled it with the Pappy Hay Plume ink sample that I had, and it actually wrote uh, fairly well. So, let me show you just a little bit um, the ink sample that I, I did right here, right here. It is the Torsade, Waterman Stainless Steel Pocket Pen. I originally wrote Unknown Model because I re when I ordered it, um, I bought it off from somebody and I, I, they didn't list what model it was. They probably didn't know what model it was. I didn't know what model it was until I asked other Waterman collectors. And I put the picture up um, in this group that I'm in. I said, does anybody know what model this is? I said, I, I, I know it's a Waterman. I know it's probably from the 70s. I could date it based upon the logo. Um, uh, the W, but I can't really tell what model it is. And they said it is the Torsade model. And so, okay, great. So I googled the uh, Waterman Torsade, and oh, sure enough, all right. There's a bunch of other pictures of them just like this. So once you know the model, you know what to Google. But if you don't want to know what the model is, I went to web page after web page after web page of Waterman identification and different websites uh, dedicated to that kind of thing, and none of them had the Torsade in there. So. So at least I know it is a torsade. All right, so um, I filled that with the ink uh, that, that you, you just saw in that writing sample. And so it's got the original cartridge. Thankfully, it came with that cartridge. So what can I tell you about this pen? It's kind of small. Let me show you a comparison. This is my pen of the day. This is a uh, Delta Dolce Vita Federico. This is the Torsade. You can tell it's a lot more slim, and you can tell that it's a lot shorter. So here, both standing at the same height. There you go. There's your comparison there. Now, let's throw up the, the graphic again of my Waterman collection. Let me show you the comparison here, left to right. Uh, the left, you'll see, is um, an old citation. Uh, very much a vintage pen, followed by the two commandos that I've got, the Crusader, the Waterman Executive, which is another very thin uh, pen, but writes excellent. It really does. The a Waterman Hemisphere, which is another excellent writer, but thin pen. The Expert 2, which is the one that I got shipped to me from England, and that one took a lot of work to get it smoothed out. Uh, I really wasn't doing really well. My uh, CF, the cartridge filler, the red one, writes it's a great writing pen it really is and there are converters that I found that can go in there um, I've given some, one away because I had two so I gave one to somebody he loved it the Phileas uh, that's the next one uh, from left to right and that's the one that kinda got me hooked on fountain pens and Waterman in particular to the right of that is the cheaper version of the Phileas the Kultur which the only reason I bought this particular one is because it was uh, Harley Davidson had red white and blue the American flag and it said Sharon Cycle Club and that happens to be you know my wife's name and then my Waterman Karen which is one of my all-time favorite pens and obviously all the way to the right is the Torsade so that should give you an idea of how um, 
the torsade fits in. So if you can find these, a uh, couple of things. They're not all that expensive, or at least it wasn't for me. I mean, this for a vintage pen was like 20 bucks, 20, 20 to 25, somewhere in there, just off the top of my head. Uh, it's a, it was an excellent condition, 1970s. So you've got that 70s vibe to it with how it looks. It writes like a Waterman. Like I said, I expect Waterman pens to write well. For me, it's kind of short, so there's no way I can write with it or uh, comfortably with it being unposted, so i got to post it. So, I mean, just looking at it, it's like 4.6 inches capped, 4 and a quarter inches unposted. So, unposted for me at 4 and a quarter inches makes it, you can see that um, it's really short in my big old paws. So, holding on to that uh, grip section here, it doesn't leave a lot of pen behind it, so I kind of have to cap it. But even capped, it's not tremendously heavy. Um, you know, this whole pen, all total, weighs 0.55 ounces. It's about 16 grams, and it's 5.375 or 5 and 3 eighths inches uh, when you post it. So I've got to post it really to write with it comfortably. And it being a slender pen, I'm not a big fan of slender pens, but I've got like three slender Waterman pens. They all write great. So if you can deal with a ballpoint pen and use it like a Bic uh, or whatever, you can write well with one of these. It's got a pretty good ink capacity with that big old cartridge that's in there. Uh, and the torsade, smooth. I didn't have to do any smoothing to this nib. I could tell it hadn't been used an awful lot, it hadn't been abused, so I got a good pen at a decent price, I just had to do a lot of cleaning with it, and then I had the frustration of, uh, you know, the converter went in there fine, and then it falls out on me, and it's like, what in the world? And then, alright, fine, dig out the, uh, do the syringe thing, and after digging out the, uh, that cartridge. So, once I got past that, and I got that working fine, I'm, I'm right happy with it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or if I'm going to give it to a family member or what, but it's just uh, another addition to my Waterman family, and uh, I'm always going to keep my eye out for some good Waterman pens. So there's an idea for you, those of you who are collectors, and if you like the idea of something that's vintage, 1970s is vintage. I mean, it's younger than I am, anyway. I mean, my wife is a 1970s vintage as well, but, uh, you know, it's it's a decent pen, yet it's still more on the modern side because it takes a cartridge or converter if you can find the right converter for it, but obviously the standard Waterman converter does not work well. So you may have to, uh, if you can find the cartridge for it, you're going to have to fill it uh, using uh, a syringe like I did. That's no big deal considering how much ink it holds, so I should be good. And, you know, it's part of uh, fountain pen ownership. All right, the Waterman Torsade, in case anybody is looking for a, a neat little find to add to your collection.